this video, we're going to be taking a look at two balancing problems that are focused on the torque of these hanging masses. We have one fairly basic question and then one sort of more difficult one. And with all these cases, we don't have to consider any angles because all of our masses are hanging and pulling per perpendicular to this plank. Now we have torque equals force times lever arm. And the force from each of these masses is mg mass times 9.8 and the r value is the distance from the fulcrum the fulcrum or the pivot point is going to be right in the center here and then for this one right over here now since we're going to have torques on both sides then we would have some form of mgr on both sides and then the g's would actually cancel out and although we typically use a unit of kilograms for mass and typically use a unit of meters for any kind of distance we can use different units as long as we use the same unit on each side so based on the things i have here i have things in grams and centimeters so i'm just going to try to stay consistent with that now with that being said we want to make sure the torque on one side of the beam is equal to the torque on the other side of the beam so the torque from the 20 gram mass has to equal the torque from the unknown mass m so what we can do is we can just simply say that 20 grams times 30 centimeters equals the unknown mass times 50 centimeters and then it just becomes a quick and easy algebra problem where we divide both sides by 50 and then our mass comes out to 12 grams so if you want any kind of unknown mass or distance, uh, you're going to do something very similar to this purple setup right there. And then typically just one um, step of algebra, and then you can find that unknown mass. Now for the second setup over here, it becomes much more complicated. So in this one over here, we didn't consider the mass of the actual beam or plank or whatever you want to call it. Um, even if it did have some mass, if it's bounced right in the center, the amount of torque from each side of this beam would be the same and basically cancel each other out. So for our second problem, it's going to be a little bit more complex because we're balanced in a spot that's not at the center of the plank. Um, it's 300 grams and it's 1.5 meters long. So we'll say that's 150 centimeters total where we have 50 centimeters on this side and then 100 centimeters on that side. So we're going to have to make sure uh, we incorporate that into our setup. So first of all, let's set up the torque from each of the masses on each side and then see how we're gonna incorporate the mass and the length of the actual plank itself too. All right, so we have the mass and the lever arm for each one of these uh, unknown mass M, 50 centimeter lever arm, and then the 200 paired with the 10, the 300 paired with the 50. Now, the actual plank itself is 300 grams, and it looks like two thirds of it is on this side because um, 100 centimeters is on this side and 50 centimeters is on that side. So if we call 50 centimeters like a single unit, um, 100 centimeters has two units of this 300 grams and then the 50 centimeters has one unit of it. So either way, we have 100 grams of this beam or plank on this side, and then 200 grams of this beam or plank on this side. Now, the way we take care of that is like this, because that isn't hanging at a very specific point. So if we take a look at the entire plank on one side of the fulcrum, we want to find the center of mass or center of gravity for that specific part. So assuming that it's a uniformly shaped and um, the weight is distributed evenly, which we can assume is, then if there's 100 centimeters, then at 50 centimeters would be where the center of mass is. So we're going to say we have 200 grams at 50. On the other side, same idea. Um, we have 50 centimeters of the plank on this side. So taking the center of that, that's at 25. So we're going to act like we have 100 grams acting at 25. Now we've incorporated the torque of the actual beam itself. So we can go ahead and crank out all of our numbers and see what we get for our unknown mass.
All right, so after working all the numbers out, we basically found the product of these three numbers, summed them up for 19,500 um, newton meters of torque, subtracted the 10,000 from this, uh, this rud mass over here, and then divided by the 50 to find the final mass of 190 grams. So when working on a problem like this, if there are multiple masses, you make sure you just find the torque of them and then set them on different sides of the equal sign. And then from there, if you have a certain mass of the actual beam or plank itself, then you want to make sure you incorporate that. And the way you incorporate it is by um, find the center of mass of the plank on that particular side of the fulcrum and then multiply it by that mass. So for this side, we had 100 centimeters sitting on this side total, so split in half. And we have 50 centimeters as the center of mass for that portion times that 200 grams of mass. And then we did a similar thing on the other side where we had 100 grams acting on its center of mass for that portion. But this portion was 50. So we split in half and then said it was pulling at the 25. And from there, we got the mass of 190 grams. So I hope that was helpful to you in solving a couple bouncing problems and understanding how torque is applied to a plank. Thank you for watching and listening.